Dara isn't here today, so instead of the usual video, we're going watching this weightlifting documentary that I taped last night, grumbles a weary girth pushing an old TV on a wheeled frame to the front of the class. Oh, I took that seriously. So I found a video. It's from 2000. It's Russian training camp, full stop, Rusa. Let's watch it. I've literally, I've watched like 30 seconds of this. Um, I don't know where I found this. It's on YouTube. It's on a, uh, a, a YouTube account that I recognize. But other than that, I literally don't know anything about this video. I haven't watched more than 20, 30 seconds of this video to confirm that it's 32 minutes of unadulterated Russian weightlifting from a period in the heyday of Russian weightlifting. So let's go without further ado. A little bit of sound. Oh, the outfits. Lads, the outfits in this are something else. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the new audio. The studio is still getting further renovated, but there'll be better background, probably changing some colours. Seats are very comfy, but this video, I tell you, those outfits are comfy. Look at those pants. They're lounge pants. Everyone is training in lounge pants. There is definitely something going on here. This was something in the late 90s, early 2000s. I was like seven years old. The fashion in the 90s is so strange because it's now in fashion again. You live to see the fashion come around in circles. These boys just lift in weights in the most casual clothes. No one wears casual clothes like this anymore. That kind of stopped in the mid-2015s. People like Seeker Strength pants came along and Seeker Strength beautiful apparel and stuff came along. And uh, some other brands that no one cares about. But they came along. No one trains in uh, random brandless clothes anymore like that or you see random Nike t-shirts but last year when I was in Barcelona I went into like a vintage store run by Gen Z teeny boppers and it was all the clothes that I would have worn very similar when I was a child in the 90s and now it's all in fashion again with the with the teenagers with their vaping and lung collapsing and stuff so I don't recognize any of the lifters in this from what I've seen Maybe this guy, but it's very hard to tell if it's a generic Russian weightlifter in the 2000s or if it's someone I actually do recognize or if it's a weightlifter who's currently lifting, whose parent is lifting there. What I assume we will see is hopefully some very in-shape coaches. Now, technique, very Russian as usual. Everyone's got those, I think they're Adidas shoes. If anyone knows the brand of those weightlifting shoes, I think they're Adidas but those handmade, cobbled together shoes. Maybe the Russians didn't have Adidas 2000s. Although this was kind of the heyday of Russia, wasn't this? When things were temporarily freeing up. They have to be Adidas. Mark 1s. 2000X. Dyson Hoover. So, what I love about this era of Russian weightlifting, and you'll still see these plates, is tiny 10s and tiny 15s. And I would love these. I would use these all the time when I'm lifting. If I could get 10s that were smaller than the diameter of the normal plate because that way then I could just load them on, slip them on, slip them off and that would be very handy. Very hard to tell how jacked anyone is considering how baggy the clothes are which is back in fashion again. I know this is the 2000s but oversized baggy tees are in serious fashion with the folk. Oh, I love the contact in this. This is, um, let's, take, let's take a little chance to do some actual technical breakdown of a weightlifting thing that we're watching. <clears throat> Look at these clean contact. Super smooth. Nice short hip action. The goal with contact in the clean, so important, is to minimize the forward and backwards distance of your hips. The biggest problem we see is contact too early and a huge overextension of the hips in the clean. It's such a common problem. Most people jump forward. Every time I get a new one-to-one or we get new lifters in the group, in the Facebook group, who are weightlifters, a lot of times we're seeing hop forward, overextension of those hips different very very different in the snatch totally different but in the clean it's all about nice short hip action uh, and something that is very valuable because you want to make sure that you're really precise with that movement so shorten up that hip extension hip extension hip contact the least important part of the clean let's not even change let's not even call it contact i want to change that vocabulary when it comes to clean contact i want to change it to the pull under point so when the barbell gets to the contact point re-change that, reaffirm that in your brain as the get under point, to the point where you pull under the barbell. Contact, very important, of course. That's why you lift a bit more with contact. But more important still is getting under and turning that barbell over aggressively. <coughs> Another trait you'll see with the Russian weightlifters is the 
very consistent setups, but also very dynamic setups. So they're very deliberate thought processes. They're in good positions before they can pulling. Uh, everyone's pulling with those kind of hamstrings above parallel. There we fucking go. This this is why these weightlifters are lifting good technique. Everybody's crossed their legs. Everybody's wearing matching track suits. Both there's thirty percent of that body mass is entirely mustache and gusset. And they're just talking about how no one's good enough at lifting. Very uninterested because this is the 14th session this week. They're trying to find a better source of Sanazolol. China haven't started making it quite just yet, but they will soon. Here we go. Is there another mustache? Oh no, we've got a younger person. A child. So we're just chatting here. I've literally... We could be t- we could talk about anything here. Probably drugs. Or maybe if they're going to smoke some cigarettes later. They're laughing at the camera. They feel self-conscious. I understand. It's back in the 2000s. Cameras are new. Handheld cameras. This is lunacy. What's this guy going to do with this? Where's this footage even going to go? Nobody. Nobody even knows. Nobody knows where this footage is going to go. They certainly didn't 23 years later. I'd be sitting here watching it. So then the hip extension in the snatch is full extension is the most important part. Getting everything out of your legs. Full extension of the lower body is incredibly important. Not misdirected, not smashing it, but a full extension, really exaggerating it. This is the most important part of the snatch. Speed under comes with that as well, of course, but it's not necessarily to eliminate... Look at the horse in the background. Eliminate that. We T-shirt talked as well. It's not necessary to eliminate full extension to get under fast in the snatch, and a lot of times people make that um, error when they are snatching. <clears throat> so, looking like 130... I suspect this is a team of juniors. I don't think anyone is over the age of like 20 or 21 here, I would imagine. Uh, lovely lifting. Everyone's got beautiful lockouts, nice straight overhead position. Uh, yeah, definitely a team of teenagers to late teens. Uh, I'd love to know, like on a serious note, on a not of a jokey note here, when did they start drugs with the younger lifters, I wonder, and how was the conversation approached? This dude looks me snatching 140... Very fast, so very, very quickly. Um, Really fast hip action, super quickly under. Uh, no straps as well, he's still got high levels of speed. So, very fast lifters wasn't a huge hallmark of, and isn't a huge hallmark of Russian weightlifting. Oleg Perpichenov was probably one of the fastest Russian weightlifters, but you might not remember him. He was the old 77 kilo world record holder. He ended up benching like 250 or something. At like a 100 kilo body weight. So here's this fast dude again. See how lovely. Nice long second pull. Starting with those shoulders over the barbell. Hips are nice and high. Here's the the ogren of the team. The absolute monster I assume. Just that big kid. He's actually 12. No one. Uh, nobody. No one's really sure what age he is. So one. Four. Very hard to tell, 130, maybe 150 there. Uh, again, I think this looks to be 135 or so. So obviously a very good lift for any teenager. Uh, but on the come up from the Russian team, you've got to be putting up more than that. So 130. See, they those small ones are probably fives. So maybe 130, 140. Mm, it's hard to tell what it could be. So I doubt it's 160, but it could be, of course, 30, 40, 50, 60. Certainly between 145 and 160. I'd be very surprised that was 160, but it'd be not unlikely. So again, we see this a lot of speed with these youngsters. Uh, One of the things you do kind of notice with some of the Russian lifters, they do get quite slow in their lifting in certain parts. And I've talked about this before, but some of the lifters did get slower. I think it's due to the nature of their training. I think sometimes they might stray later. Uh, later in the years, away from... Okay, so here's 150. So the other one, I assume, was 145. So still incredible weights for a teenager. But I think you do see that the Russians spend a little bit too much time away from the lifts from the floor and doing the kind of doubles and singles. You know, we've seen them do fives. Uh, Gabriel's talked about them. They spend about 20 or 30% of their lifts from blocks. Um, and it did seem to negatively affect some of them uh, in terms of their pulling. You'll see a lot of the non-elites of your Russian nationals, for example. You'll see a lot of lifters are quite slow in certain parts where they shouldn't be slow. Uh, but of course, this could be for other reasons of fatigue. But it's something I speculated on for a while. Again, you'll see 
Similar start positions here with them. Hamstrings are both parallel. Shoulders are over the barbell in the start position. Varying foot width stances. But again, a incredibly crisp technical model. And I would imagine there's some serious team directive behind whoever's coaching them. So here's 150. But I'd encourage you to pick up those start positions. Adjust it slightly for your body shape, but aim for those general principles. 150. Oh, that was slick. Lads, the outfits, I love them. I love the outfits. No one trains in singlets anymore. That was the thing. Yeah, we used to do that a lot, training singlet. I used to really like doing that. Like a pull-down singlet. See the guy in the background? Same start position. Same start position. I'm telling you guys, you don't want to be special. You don't want to have weird quirks in your lifting. You don't want to be the person, that lifter who... Who... Is that Michael Jackson? That person who... You know, I've got to do this because of the way I know it suits me better. I promise you it doesn't. You know, and about the stage now we've seen hundreds into the thousands of lifters. And I'm telling you, the vast majority of the time, that routine technical model works for most people, especially if you can implement it. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for you. That benefits you. Um, you want to do that because it's repeatable. It's easily progressible. You understand the variations you need to use. You understand the things you need to do. It makes the most sense technically. It is the least moving parts. Oh, that was slick. So very aggressive dynamic starts. That single hip pump, a great dynamic start to use. I'm a big fan of that. At the start, though, a lot of times I like people using a static start, but the dynamic start is something pretty much most people will be using uh, to a certain degree, to, to varying degrees. So like him, is quite moderate, but the gentleman before him with that slick 150 was a very aggressive 150. Then that comes down to kind of personal preference, that kind of aspect, like muscle fiber makeup, strength levels, psychological approach to the lifts. So we've, uh, looks to be 150 again, unless there's smaller plates on inside the collars. Five o'clock in the evening, and we're going for a big 150 snatch. Look at that. It looks the exact same as that first lift. And that's what you're striving for. Repeatability of the same technical model is what you want in your training. That's how you get better. It's that that saying from Bruce Lee, you know, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks, but the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. And that's what you want with weightlifting, a really precise, consistent technical model that you can make incremental changes to to improve upon and repeat. And eventually those changes become second nature. And if you do that in two years' time, and that's how long it takes sometimes to make big changes in your lift, six months to two years' time, you'll you'll be a different lifter and you won't know yourself. Uh, you've got to give it that time. So this looks to be 130... Uh, so nice smooth start from this dude. Similar start position, so shoulders. Bit of a jump back. Um, but some high waisted tucked in pants. Okay, this guy can't be a teenager. He looks. To, is that three reds or two reds? It's two reds, surely. Okay, so that's one. No, is that three reds? No, 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 that's not three reds, surely not. Well, like, oh, why not? Surely not. It's the Russian team of the dozens, but still. You do see that with the larger teenagers, that the mobility in the hips is often compromised due to the mass of the ass. Okay, so we're going for 130 here. Uh, quite an aggressive lifter here from what we've seen quite fast. We've got this kind of shorter, narrow stance with those toes turned out. But again, he's aiming for that kind of start position before the bar moves. See, I, I don't like that. Hips dipping down, coming into the position. I prefer to load the hamstrings to come down. Okay, that is 130. Uh, hips come down into that start position. You know, preloaded muscles or pre-stretched muscles produce more force. And that's what we're going for. So here, I think this is 155. Close to his limits, but a crazy lift for a teenager. So this is, uh, I'm very interested to see what this will look like. I'm glad I didn't didn't watch this because it is uh, some pretty lifting. Oh, oh, boy, oh, boy, was that nice. That was slick. Okay, so back to 135. He looks to be one of the younger lifters of the team. Um, interesting how no one's snatching with straps. Very nice. So still 135. a lot of repetition with that. Leave in the comments to let me know who your favorite outfit is. 
personally i do like the shorter sleeves rolled up or the very long sleeves to the elbow i do like that style sometimes depending on how you know your body's morph is doing that day i'm joking no i think tight t-shirt short sleeves tucked in pants uh socks on show i like to see some ankles that's my that's my ideal outfit it's a nice 135 from him bit of a jump back so pulling their shoulders back a bit early we're seeing that kind of jump away from the barbell so he's not as quite fast in that transition underneath oh that was nice so looks to be 130 again okay i don't think we've seen this guy before so a bit lighter i think a smaller lifter uh, maybe wearing straps as well actually so this looks to be something like 120 or so lovely start position beauty full. What you'll see as well with the Russian lifters, everyone has great lockouts. You'll see a lot of that pressing and we're just really training that end range of motion for our elbows and that's very important. And you'll see if you watch any of the modern crossfitters lifting, if you go to that Miami event was a Palooza, you'll see that everyone has a great lockout and that's from spending a lot of time at static positions but doing a lot of pressing, high repetitions and making that elbow end range of motion strong. Very nice lifting from this dude. So minimal foot movement, but fast under the barbell. I would suspect if he misses, we're going to see a miss out front from that previous guy. Old school Adidas. Uh, oh, actually, the Atten singlet was the one with the stripes, so I wonder what that one is. Maybe it's not even Adidas. Oh no, that's a, it's a handmade Russian, I would say. That's a Russian special. Okay, 140-ish, I'm guessing. Just to save you trying to add up the plates while you're watching, I'm, I'll keep making some speculations beautiful oh this is some lovely snatching i hope we get to see some clean and jerks from these boyos okay 115 nice made it very fast under the barbell great speed from everyone here very interesting to see that uh, very very interesting especially without straps so a lot of times you'll see the turnover is better for lifters without straps and i had a bit of time with martin zoasia so he's the ninth the 88 Olympic bronze medalist in Seoul. He was for Germany, uh, East Germany. He used to, uh, he came from, uh, he hated the use of straps. He was very into it uh, not being used outside of pulls. He believed it just reinforced a lot of bad habits and too much swing of the barbell and the turnover. Uh, again, as I've talked about, that German technical model is, is phenomenal and you can still see it today and it's great to see. So, some pulls after for the lads in the background. Here's one 30 again. Very casual, so it's hard to speculate what this dude's max is. Young boy is going up a little bit. Looks like he's going, he's going for 140. Let's see it. The underdog. <coughs> uh, nice. Well done. Great lifting. So, I know a few are probably going to ask, but I did see Squat Journalist's video. Uh, probably, I don't think we're going to make a video on it go back to that young fellow once he's lifting again but he, okay this dude is very sharp so this is 135, this is going to be slick I'd say That's, it looks like there's three red plates but it can't be it definitely can't be three red plates so I'd say this is 155 is it ooh yes sir big fan of his outfit, I like that so I did see Squash Journalist video, Squash Jerk Journalist. Uh, we won't make a video on it, you know. We do really try to make a point of not milking things, you know, make our points known, talk about them because that's part of the, the YouTube and their media channels. Obviously education, but also entertainment. But from Squat Jerks, he's just kind of giving his personal experience with the things. He essentially seems to be confirming some of the conspiracy theories. Uh, he left a comment from one of the videos uh, he said it wasn't the Black Ops mission, which I think is conjecture, and we all know it definitely was a Black Ops mission uh, with AC-130s, despite what he says. Uh, but no, I don't think we'll do anything about it. So I just wanted to address that. Uh, you know, there, it's uh, an interesting video. It's interesting to see him give his thought process, and I think he'll make another video. So it's uh, someone who's worked closely with Lou, obviously. Uh, seems quite hard on him. Obviously, it's quite upsetting for him in terms of his career. And what he loves doing. So it does suck from that point of view. You know, Lou is the GOAT. Uh, but hopefully, he'll be able to keep doing media for weightlifting, you know, and hopefully more with the Chinese team. I see you can definitely notice some great footage coming out of them. He seems to be working with them. So 
uh, hopefully the best of luck to him back to our teenagers so you always see those uh, massage beds as massage beds massage beds are present uh, in the russian training halls always getting massages either before or after training uh, huge fans of those especially with the training load so this dude looks i want to say bigger but i think it's just because his head's a bit bigger but he seems to be snatching in the 120s finally getting to see some clean and jerks i'm going to assume everyone's going to be very fast on their the the clean in the clean and jerk now i know we would see some cleans earlier actually i just completely wiped that from my memory mid mid video but hopefully we'll get to see some bigger clean and jerks so still on the same day and we're about an hour later so i wonder if they took a break you'll see a lot of like the kind of bulgarian related systems will take breaks between exercises you know bulgarians greeks kazakhstan kind of lifting every half an hour across essentially a full working day uh, to allow restoration of energy systems dissipation of fatigue ensure you're still primarily fast twitch fibers as much as possible so i assume these are pulls i don't know back some repetitions at snatches oh very interesting so we went up for heavy snatches and then down for some snatch and hang snatch oh no sorry this is a different day this is the 17th so we're on the 15th there oh that was actually quite interesting it's a bit strange but interesting so we're snatching with straps snatch from hang snatch we're allowed to use straps low hang the best hang variation you can do probably one of the best variations most people could do with is low hang snatches in terms of the the full lift derivatives uh, coupled with maybe you no know, foot snatches are great depending on the person if you don't know foot snatches correctly no foot is no foot snatches no foot is <laughs> no foot is no foot is done incorrectly or useless but technically good no foot snatches are very handy so this looks to be 120 ish i'm judging if there's tiny yellow fives and everyone is you'll see this team program you know it's uh this is something I've strong opinions on of course you know coupled with theoretical knowledge but also with practical knowledge from seeing again hundreds into the thousands of lifters running programs for us you know and that you run the base program you do what you need to do to get better because there's known parameters and known things that you need to need to do to get better and you push for them and you train hard with those and then you make adjustments based on your minor increments minor adjustments but that base programming works you know because there's things you need to do to get better that the human body needs to practice and there is of course of course there's individual differences that need to be accommodated for but you still run that program because they're the things you need to do you know you still need to snatch in the 90s you still need to snatch in the 90 percent you still need to clean jerk 90 percent you still need to squat a certain amount of weight uh the 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 one of the in uh Medivh's book he talks about this and the use of a system and why it's very important to use a system and people they've looked at results comparison of a state administrative system across a couple of different schools uh, you know a well thought out well planned system that they put a lot of work in compared to previous results from those schools and stuff uh, it's quite interesting data I might go through that sometime actually now i'm not saying you don't need individual changes for programming of course you do at stages but if you imagine it's a base stream and you're trying to continue along that stream and you'll branch off at times, but the idea is to kind of come back into that base, you know. Uh, you Don't fall into the trap thinking that, like that technical model, that, oh, I need, I need this. It's really important that I'm doing this very individual thing for me. You know, weightlifting is is interesting. That's fact that it's, uh, you got to get the work done. Now, when someone's teaching you technique, it can be very individual and quite different for you, obviously, because as your mind's working, how your body's built. But you're still looking for that same technical position. So we have a little bit more humor now on these these, uh, these young fellas. We're getting up close and personal. We're getting some different shots for the snatch, hang snatches. Okay, so feeling out positions. It's going quite light everybody's in good condition everyone's in good nick everyone is uh a minor horse not yet a full horse obviously because it is the uh, the junior team by the looks of things i wonder what became of a lot of these lifters and how the results go if, if anyone recognized them or anyone knows where the results ended up i'd be very interested to hear 
And uh, I think Sydney was 2000. Sydney was 2000. And I think that was the first year female weightlifters were allowed to compete in the Olympics, which is actually ludicrous when you think about it. That was the first Olympics. It's pretty sure it was Sydney that it was the first Olympics female lifters were allowed, which is mental. But there you have it. So I'm a big fan of this outfit. So we can see a lot of calf, but the ankle is covered because he's not obviously a Babylonian woman of the night. He's covering his ankles. Um, so I, I'm a fan of these three-quarter pants. I assume he's pulled them up. Fake Adidas. Adidas tried to trademark the, the three Adidas stripes, I think, but they couldn't particularly do it as, or something like some variation of that or tried to trademark the two stripes, but I don't think they were able to get away with it. Uh, 140, so very nice here. So snatch and low hang snatch. Maybe one four. Actually, no, that's not 140. That's 110, I'd say. The, uh, the width of the plates. Yeah, so I'd say 110-ish, so nice and handy. Although, he's given this a lot of thought. So maybe there's two plates. No, there's one plates. That was too easy. So, a lot of... Uh, some rabbit holes to go down to see how many companies used to be working with the Nazis in terms of like modern-day large companies. But, uh, there you go. So, we seem to have one... I really can't tell if there is two reds on this or one. I think it's just one red. So we're looking at 120, I would think, here. So nice, fast under. Pretty short hip extension there, so very fast. So you don't want to, while you're still looking for a full hip extension in the snatch, you don't want this large travel distance of your hips. So if you think your hips fall traveling in that horizontal plane, you don't want this distance to be very long. You just want this distance to be very, very short, fore and after, the latest possible time before you extend the hips. While you then still extend the hips fully, you're not traveling them from, as soon as the bar passes your knees, you're not bringing them in. You're not bringing them in too early, but you are waiting for that correct point before you extend the hips, and then you're getting full hip extension. So, moving on then to... Okay, we're still on the snatches. Are we? Yes, we are. So, he, Rick rolled me there. He was... Uh, Rick rolling me. I thought he was doing some cleans of straps on. So, again, with a long sleeve. 100 kilos. So, obviously, a bit of a lighter day. Not as fully heavy. But, of course, the Russians wouldn't go that heavy two days or two days later on the snatch. That would not be their style. Right or wrong, depending sure it worked out many ways to skin the cat. If this was the Kaz or the Greeks or the Bulgarians, they would have been going just as heavy four hours later, let alone three days later. So 100 kilos. So lighter day. Assume percentage work across sets and reps, just working up to maybe something like the 70s or 80%, but probably not a whole lot more uh, technical practice and get the benefits of the low hang snatch. The uh, Russian radiators just pumping hot water through the background is interesting. So he's actually only 15, but looks to be 30. So are we... Do oh, what's in that pill bottle? Oh my God, what is in that bottle? That genuinely could be gear. That actually could be gear. They might not give a fuck because they might have thought no one would ever seen this. That could be just some um, straight up windstrawl. Little snazzle on that note, I think we're done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I was going to do a lifter week, but I think that was a bit more, uh, that was a bit spicy. It was something different. Head over to seekestrength.com to check out our weightlifting 2.0. So this is our newest iteration in our weightlifting stream of programs. It is moved away from the block system where we do four week continuous blocks. We moved along into a 12 week encapsulated program where it peaks your squat, snatch, clean jerk, in weeks zero or weeks one until 12 uh, and then you know you can kind of peak at the end of those 12 weeks so if you have to plan competitions or plan your life or you know accommodate for training blocks you can get good training block done assess where you are see what the upcoming events in your life are see what the last few weeks were like and how things went and then decide how things go from there so a lot of people in the midst of that and some people will be coming towards the end of that very very soon so very excited to see how those people are going we have people making pbs already in the the intermittent max it's throughout the program so 
That'll be in the link below to Seeker Strength Weightlifting 2.0 and there will be subsequent future 12 weeks blocks released once we just get a bit of feedback from these current blocks. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know I certainly enjoyed watching this. And the real question is, where's Zara? And now nobody knows. Thanks for watching.